Hey, I'm Jamie Aaron, and today we're going to talk about getting into uh, different kinds of pedals and getting your tone together. So I have a pretty basic pedal board in terms of kind of everything you need um, to cover most gigs. And I'll talk about the order and how I combine them, how I use them, and how you can use them. So the first thing uh, in my chain here is a wah pedal. And it's important to have the wah first. Um, some people like it after distortion for certain things, but um, I keep it in front. And uh, I use this for both rhythm stuff and lead stuff, but obviously for... It's great for that kind of thing. And it can be very expressive with single note lines, too. And it just takes treble off and on of the signal. So you can either use it with a consistent rhythm, if you're playing rhythm guitar, or you can also step on the pedal when you need a little bit of expression to sort of mimic a voice. So that's the wah. So moving on, uh, the next thing in my chain, I go to a tuner. Important to have, always got to be in tune. Uh, and from there, I go to a compressor. So a compressor is an interesting pedal because um, not a lot of people really understand what it does, and it's kind of difficult to articulate. Um, but basically, it squashes the signal, and the more sensitive you make it, uh, it sort of evens out the attack. So when you press really hard or attack really hard, it squashes it and brings it kind of quiet. But if you play very quietly, it makes the note a little louder. So it sort of evens out your signal. So I like to use compression uh, for funk rhythm guitar parts or single note guitar parts. And it just sort of makes the part pop out, especially if you're playing in a band. It really lets it kind of fit right in, in the mix. Um, and another thing that compression does, which we can talk about a little later, uh, is it adds sustain to your sound. So if you're playing an overdriven solo and you really want to make the note last and sustain, compression is great for that. So from there, um, we go into this MXR Phase 90. And I keep a phaser on here. It sort of functions as uh, a few different pedals, since I don't have a lot of space on this board for multiple things. So if I keep it at a, a slow, and you see it only has one knob, that's for speed. If I keep it at a slow speed, it's great as kind of a chorus. And you can sort of hear the, the arc of the, of the waves that it has through it. So when I put it in the middle, this is also good for kind of funk rhythm. You can also use it for lead lines. And if you increase the speed all the way up, you get a really fast kind of thing, which I like um, when I don't have a Leslie pedal uh, on. You can sort of mimic the sound of a Leslie rotary speaker. So for one knob, it can be really versatile and give you a lot of sounds. So from there, um, even though it looks like I'm not going into it, the wiring underneath, uh, I go into the Clean Boost, RC Booster. And this just takes the sound. And if you have the gain dialed back, you can just take what sound you have and just make it a little louder. Also have EQs, uh, which is great if you're playing an amp that's not yours and you want to sort of dial the sound, make it a little brighter or less bright. It gives you some versatility for that. But if you add a little bit of gain, it still keeps a clean sound, but just adds a little bit of crunch in there. So I also like to use a clean boost uh, if I'm taking a solo and I have my pedals set for a certain level, but I just need a little bit of extra 
uh, volume to take it over the edge for a solo, I'll just step on that clean boost and it gives me that, that freedom. So from there, uh, go into a tube screamer and I kind of keep this one set for just a medium kind of gain, not over the top, but great for blues tones. Um, and it's also good for some nice crunchy rhythm parts. And you can adjust the, the gain up a little bit, but I like to leave the drive down and the level up to um, really give it the sort of classic Stevie Ray thing. But you know, if you turn the drive up a little bit, you can get a little more gain. So from there, I go into what is more of a full-on uh, distortion pedal, and this is sort of a Marshall kind of sound. That's, you know, your full-on rock and roll. And uh, from there, to delay, um, I keep my delay if I uh, only have one going, um, a tape delay, so I get a little bit of modulation sound. And actually, before the delay, I forgot about the volume pedal, uh, I go from the distortion into the volume pedal. And the reason is, when you have distortion, uh, if the volume pedal is before that and you turn it down, it'll actually kill the distortion. But if it's afterwards, you can keep it really quiet while retaining all your gain. But then it's important to have the delay pedal after the volume, so if you have the delay set a certain way and you pull back on the volume pedal, you'll still have the sound of the delay ringing out. So even after I pulled the volume pedal all the way back, you could still hear that feedback of the delay. So back to the delay sound, um, I usually keep tape delay kind of sound for most purposes. And um, three knobs here, once I've selected my tape, for the effects level, just how much delay you want. Delay is the speed, whether you want it slow or faster. And then feedback is how many repeats. So you can have a lot of repeats, you can have few repeats. So I usually keep my feedback with a couple repeats, and it's great for really filling out the sound of chords, but also for lead lines. Just to really give it more sound and more sustain and fill it out. So after the delay, I have tremolo, and I keep this last because I really like it to sort of mimic if I was going into an amp with tremolo, an old Fender style amp. So this is great, obviously, for kind of R&B rhythm parts. And really just, it's good for getting a vibe. You can control the speed to a really fast or a slow. It just depends how much you want that signal. So those are all the basic functions of the pedal. Um, some cool combinations, like I said, if you put compression on with overdrive, you can really get some good sustain. And you can also stack, so if I wanted to go ahead and throw on the Tube Screamer. Give you a little extra oomph to it. Same goes for the boost. So you can really mess around with different combinations and see kind of how they all function. And you know, the phaser doesn't have to be for rhythm stuff. You could 
throw it on top of a lead sound. So this is just a real, you know, kind of basic pedal board. Um, nothing too crazy on here, but it works and gets me through most situations. And uh, it's a great way to kind of open up the palette of using pedals in your everyday tone. So the world of pedals, it can be pretty overwhelming because there's so many boutique companies that make all kinds of different pedals. Uh, but really, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get great tone. I mean, of course, we've all heard many times the tone really comes from your hands and the pedals are just a little bit of an extra tool to get there and help you get the sound you're hearing. Um, but really, I mean, all these pedals are things you could basically find at any guitar center. Uh, and, you know, with them, really, as long as you learn the right ways to use them and how to appropriately set the levels and know what they do, uh, you can get great tone. And just, you know, take it on your gigs, take it to recording sessions or wherever you're playing. Um, and just really uh, enjoy what these pedals can do and how they can help you achieve that sound and that tone that you want and ultimately express, you know, what you're hearing and let it come through in your guitar.